So, RFBT tayo today. Yung RFBT na yun, maraming nahihirapan. Kasi medyo mabigat intindihin eh, di ba? And para maintindihan mo, ang dami mong babasahin. Diba? So, I won't be of much use to you sa pagbabasa. Of course, kasi syempre ikaw lang, ikaw lang makagawa nun. But what I can help you with is understanding. So, AMLA. Okay. Sulat ko muna. Okay. So, yung AMLA na yan, originally, 9160. Alright? Pero ngayon, it has gone over so many amendments, ito ang latest version niya. So, pag nagbasa ka ng AMLA, dapat hanggang dito alam mo. Alright? Eh, bakit ba may ganyan? Diba? Para saan ba yan? Anong, bakit siya nag exist in the first place? Tawagin nating Purpose. Purposes. Okay? May tatlo po. Okay? Okay. Kapag binasa mo yung AMLA, makikita mo yan. Sa simula pa lang yun. Okay? So, ano yung una? It aims to preserve the confidentiality and integrity of bank accounts. Alright? So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Yung first, sinasabi ng gobyerno na huwag kayo mag-alala, secret pa rin yung laman ng accounts nyo. Okay? Kasi di ba may bank secrecy tayo. Ang sabi ni AMLA, kahit meron na tayong ganitong batas, secret pa rin yan. Okay? Pero, ito yung importante. Sabi nila, integrity daw. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ang pinoprotektahan lang ng ating batas is what? Yung mga legit na accounts. Yung makatotohanan. Yung galing sa mabuting pamamaraan. Okay? Next purpose. Ito. The government aims to prevent the Philippines from becoming a money laundering site. Okay? Ayaw ng Pilipinas or ayaw ng gobyerno natin na maging tourist destination tayo ng masasamang loob. Bakit? Marami na tayong ganun dito eh. ba? Diba? Pero joke lang. Ayaw lang nila na pinipili tayo ng masasamang loob para gawin yung mga illegal na activities nila. Dito nila dinadala yung perang galing sa masama. Bakit? Kasi hindi mauhuli. Siyempre, ayaw natin yun. And lastly, okay, we obliged ourselves to cooperate in transnational Investigation and prosecution. Kasi ang money laundering, okay, kapag na-involve niyan ang maraming bansa, humihirap yung hulihin. Mahirap na nga siya hulihin by itself. Eh lalo na ngayon, di ba, ang daling mag-transfer ng pera? Okay? Kapag ka na-involve, bawat country na dadadagdag dun sa chain na pinupuntahan ng pera mo, pahirap ng pahirap hulihin yan. So maraming bansa ang nag-agree na sige magtulungan na lang tayo para matigil yan. Okay? Eh, ano ba yung money laundering in the first place? Bakit natin pinagbabawal yan? May general definition yan. Accepted generally, ha? Okay? So, money laundering. Sulat ko muna.
Okay, medyo mahaba. So bear with me. So generally, tanggap ito ng karamihan ng bansa sa buong mundo that money laundering ay crime. Okay? Tandaan na, na dapat merong proceeds of illegal activities are transacted to make them appear to have come from legitimate sources. Ano ibig sabihin nun? May pera na galing sa masamang pamamaraan na pinapalabas mo malinis. Okay? So, galing sa masama, may gagawin ka para magmukha siyang malinis. Yun po ang money laundering. Right? In line with the definition, merong stages ang money laundering. Okay? Tatlo po yan. Placement, layering, and integration. Okay? Placement, layering, and integration. Technically, ang sinasabi nila, placement daw is when the money from unlawful activities is introduced into the financial system. Tapos, layering are a series or combination of transactions designed to erase the trace of the unlawful activity. And finally, pag integration na, the money can be used as if legitimate siya. Okay? So, ayaw ko kayong turuan paano mag ng pera. Okay? Kasi hindi ako marunong noon. Hindi ako marunong noon. Okay? Pero, you have to, kung, if you really need an example, you might remember the movie of Ben Affleck. Hindi yung Batman, ha? Yung The Accountant. Okay? Sa The Accountant, tingnan nyo na lang sa Google, of course. Basically, ang nangyari doon, yung very early st stages ng movie, di ba may laundry shop? Siya yung auditor or accountant ng laundry shop na yon, Okay? Kompleto yun. Nakap maayos ang numbers, nagbabayad ng buwis. Okay? Pero, kapansin mo, ni isang labada. Walang nagawa doon. Bakit? Kasi ang kliyente niya talaga ay hindi naman yung laundry shop. Ang kliyente niya, puro mga sindikato yon, Gumagawa ng illegal activities, kailangan nilang gawan ng paraan na magmukhang malinis ang kitaan. So, ang ginawa nila, yung example, kidnap for ransom yung ginagawa. Ha? Hindi ko na kasi maalala. So, kunyari, kidnap for ransom. Yung ransom money, ininvest nila doon sa, or part of the ransom money, ininvest nila doon sa laundry shop. Okay? Ngayon, yung laundry shop na yun, kahit walang naglalaba, kumikita. Tapos, kinukompleto ni Ben Affleck yung numbers, magbabayad sila ng buwis, hindi walang problema. So, yung kinita galing sa maduming pamamaraan, in the end, lumalabas yung kita from the, sorry, from yung kita from the kidnapping, magagamit nila, pero ang source niya sa papel, pag tinignan mo yung mga papel, ano yung source ng kita na yun? Yung laundry shop. Ganon po yung basic kung paano ginagawa yung money laundering. Okay? Of course, sa totoong buhay, mas kompleks yan. Okay? Sana hindi nyo na matutunan kung paano ginagawa yun. Okay? Kasi, as you will learn later, medyo mabigat-bigat ang consequence pag ganon. Okay? So, ang money laundering, mga kaibigan, mahirap yan, kapa, mahirap hulihin kapag ka tapos na. Kapag natago na, after na nito, tas nandito ka na sa integration, mahirap na hulihin yan. Okay? So, yung batas natin, designed siya para i-detect or i-arrest ang money laundering at the very early stages. As early as possible. Okay? Kaya ang tawag doon, Yan ang meron sa batas natin. Preventive measures. Okay? Kasi di ba, prevention is still better than the cure. So, ibig sabihin, tinatry mong hulihin habang nangyayari pa lang. Okay? So, ano yon? Tatlo rin yan. Okay? Sa batas natin, merong, sorry, customer identification, customer identification, record keeping, and transaction reporting. Okay? Customer identification, makikita nyo usually ang pangalan niyan, customer due diligence at saka prohibited accounts. Okay? Yung prohibited accounts, of course, hindi ka pwedeng mag-open ng anonymous. Yung mga ganyan. Okay? Yung customer due diligence naman, yan, ang common name niyan is KYC. Know your customer. Okay? Lumutang yung, yung mga, mga letters na yan 
nung nagkaroon ng Bangladesh Bank heist. Alright? Uh, I-Google nyo na lang din, maganda rin kwento yun. Okay? Basta merong million-million na dollars na nawawala. Ganda, di ba? Alam nyo kung saan nawala? Siyempre, sa Pilipinas nating mahal. Okay. Tapos, yung customer due diligence pala, take note ah, kasi this will come, uh, this will become important later. Yung customer due diligence, hindi lang yan identity. Okay? Tinitignan mo rin kung ano yung pattern ng customer mo. Paano siya kumikita? Paano siya gumagastos? Ano bang negosyo niyan? Anong pinagkakitaan niyan? Kinikilala mo yung kliyente mo. Okay? Kinikilala mo siya. Okay? Mamaya, malalaman nyo kung bakit kailangan mo gawin yun. Now, yung record keeping naman, of course, lahat daw nung sinabmit sa'yo at saka yung transactions, correspondence, dapat itago mo raw yun. Okay? You don't dispose of it right away. May time lang. Five years. Okay? Five years daw. Ito namang transaction reporting. Okay? Obligado yung institutions na mag-report ng certain transactions, as the name implies, di ba? Pero anong mga transaction yon? Okay? Ito yan. Okay? Tatlo po yung klase ng transaction ang nire-report, ha? Covered transaction, suspicious transaction, at saka realty transaction. Okay? Ano yung realty transaction? Yan yung sa lupa. Pag nag-register ka ng lupa or ng kondo, kailangan i-report. So, paano malalaman kung kailangan i-report na? Tatandaan, sa covered at saka sa realty, ang importante lang yung amount. Okay? Wala tayong pakialam kung anong circumstance, basta yung amount. Okay? So, anong amount yan? Pag realty transaction, guys, ang amount niya, in excess, ha? In excess of 500,000. Okay? Kapag covered naman, tatlong amount ang tatandaan mo. 500K, 1M, 5M. In excess, ha? So, pag covered, tatlong amount ang tatandaan mo. 500K, 1M, 5M. Pag realty, isa lang. 500K lang. Alright? Now, pag suspicious transaction, baliktad naman. Wala kang pakialam sa amount. Okay? Ang kailangan mong patunayan dyan, yung circumstances which make the transaction suspicious. Okay? So, again, wala kang amount, but you have to prove or identify, sorry, identify any of the seven instances. Merong seven circumstances which make the transaction suspicious. Okay? Ano yan? Diyan papasok to. Okay? One. Ano ba yung una? Kalimutan ko na. Ano ba yung una dyan? There is no economic justification. Number two, the client is not properly identified. Number three, uh, disproportionate to the financial capacity of the client. Number four, it deviates from the customer profile. Diba? Yun munang apat. So, paano malalaman ng bank or ng institution yun? Diba bumuo siya ng profile dahil sa customer due diligence? So, kapag sumasalungat or parang hindi yan yung karaniwang ginagawa ng customer mo, magiging suspicious siya. Okay? Next. Uh, example pala muna para maganda-ganda. O kunyari, um, kunyari balut vendor. Okay? O hindi, fishbowl na lang. So, may UP, nagbibenta ng fishbowl. Okay? Nag-deposit ng 499,000. Hmm, di ba? Hindi ba kakaduda-duda? So, magiging suspicious yon. Bakit? He doesn't fit the profile. Diba? Paano kikita ng 499,000 ang isang balut vendor? Diba? Pero pwede naman niyang ipaliwanag. Okay? As long as supported by regas, okay lang. Pero ordinarily, kung yun lang ang given, suspicious yun. Okay? Next. Okay? Kung ano yung isa? When the transaction is structured in a way to avoid being reported. Structured in such a way to avoid being reported. 
example. Meron kang 1.5 million. Okay? Pag dineposit mo siya in one day, reportable ba yun? Yes. Bakit yes? Kasi di ba lampas ng 500,000? So, reportable siya. So, anong gagawin mo? Mag-deposit ka ng 300,000 for five days. Di ba? 1.5 pa rin yun. Mare-report ba siya under covered transactions? Hindi, di ba? Kasi hindi nag-breach. Hindi nag-breach. Pero, bakit mo ginawa yung ganong arrangement? Bakit dineposit mo ng 300 a day? Kasi, you are trying to avoid the reportorial requirement. Okay? So, ilan na ba tayo? Liba na. Yung pang -anim, if it is in any manner related to money laundering or unlawful activities. And yung number seven, of course, yun yung hindi nyo makakalimutan talaga, any other act which is similar and analogous to the foregoing. Ganda, di ba? Huwag yun ang tatandaan nyo, ha? Ang tatandaan nyo yung unang anim. Okay? Kasi walang kwenta yun. Okay? So, I hope malinaw yan. Okay? Eh, sino ba nagre-report? Sino nagre-report ng mga to? Okay? Yan yung tinatawag na covered persons. Okay? Covered persons. May tatlong set din sila. Okay? Yung una, ay, dito, dito muna tayo sa last. Yung last, yung LRA, tsaka mga register of deeds. Yung LRA tsaka re register of deeds, yan yung sa lupa, sa kondo, dyan mo nire-register. Dyan sila nagbibigay ng titles mo. Okay? Now, huwag kayo malilito, yung LRA, RD, dito lang yan. Sila, sila lang ang nagre-report nito. Okay? Okay. Yung una are financial institutions. Okay? Financial institutions. Ito yung susi dyan, ha? Regulated or supervised by Okay? Financial institutions regulated or supervised by BSP, IC, SEC. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Hindi po si BSP ang nagre-report, ha? Ibig sabihin, dapat yung institution supervised or regulated by BSP. Sino yon? Bangko. <laughs> okay, ano pa? Ano pa bang supervised ni BSP? Pawn shop. Ano pa? Foreign exchange. Alright, mga ganyan. Remittance. Sa kanila rin yun. Okay? Now, insurance commission. Hindi rin sila ang magre-report, ha? Yung entity supervised or regulated by insurance commission. Ano yun? Insurance company. Pre-need company. If, if masigasig ka, alamin mo paano ang insurance holding company. Okay? Google mo lang yun. Pero mga ganyan. Next, SEC. Hindi po lahat, ha? Hindi lahat ng supervised ng SEC. Kailangan, may listahan lang yun. So, ang examples niyan, yung brokers, dealers, sellers of securities. Ano pa? Yung mutual funds, common trust funds, yung mga ganon. So, sila, kailangan mag-report. Okay? Hindi yung SEC mismo. Yung mga entity supervised by the entity. So, yung mga entity na yan, they are, nakalista lang yan. Nakalista. You can just take a look. Okay? Familiarize. Of course, familiarize yourselves. Now, ito yung, yung next set, medyo mouthful, ha? So, bear with me. Okay. Designated non-financial businesses and professions. Okay? Sino yung mga yan? Yan daw yung mga entity, okay, na hindi covered ng BSP, IC, SEC, pero sabi ng AMLA, mag-report pa rin kayo. Okay? Sino yung mga to? Sulat ko muna. Okay. Jewelers, dealers of precious metals, precious stones, company service providers, other professionals, at saka, casino. Again, itong casino na ito, dala rin yan ng Bangladesh Bank Heist. Okay? Dati kasi, kapag nakakita kayo ng, di ba, may mga sample, may mga sample questions sa RFBT noon, ang tinatanong, 
which of the following is not a reporting entity or is not a covered person under AMLA? Ang sagot, casino. Mali na po yun ngayon, ha? Hindi na yun. Bakit? Dahil dito. Okay? Dahil doon. So, casino is now a covered person. Now, ang iingatan mo lang dyan, yung CSP at saka other persons or professionals. Kasi listahan na naman yan. Okay? Yung CSP, ang sabi, an example of which is someone who arranges for a nominee shareholder. Or if you're acting as a partner in a partnership. On behalf of another ito, ha? Or you're acting as corporate secretary. Yung mga ganyan. Okay? Yung other persons naman, basically, you are managing assets of the client. Ganun siya. Pero again, take a look at the list para at least familiar ka. Now, bakit natin kailangan alamin kung anong type ng reporting entity? Kasi di ba, meron tayo nito. Transactions in excess of 500, 1 million, 5 million. Tandaan mo, ang general rule, yung 500. So, all the transactions in excess of 500,000, reportable. Except, pag ikaw to, at ito. Naintindihan? Pag jewelers, precious metals, precious stones, magkano ang threshold? 1M. So, in excess of 1M, sila. Kapag naman casino ka, in excess of 5 million. So, again, transaction reporting, ano ang general threshold mo? 500,000. In excess of 500,000. Except, pag ikaw ay jeweler, precious metals, precious stones, 1M ka. Kapag ka casino ka naman, 5 million ka. Gets? I hope so. Now, ang tanong usually is paano kung nag-report? Okay? Okay? Nag-report. Tapos, nagkaroon ng kaso na acquit siya. Yung napatunayang wala siyang sala. Ano mayyari? Kunyari, kinasuhan si Brad De La Cruz, money laundering. Di ba? Kasi nag-deposit ng ano, 10M. One banking day. Suspicious. Ay, hindi. Normal pala sa profile ni Brad yan. Ano? 100 million. Kunyari, 100 million. Okay? Deposit siya, kinasuhan, tapos na-acquit. Kasi napatunayan niya, ah, ano lang yan? Kinikita ko talaga yan. 100 million. Okay. Pwede bang i-demanda ni Brad De La Cruz yung, kunyari, yung banko na nag-report? Hindi po. Okay? As long as the reporting was done in good faith and under obligation of the law, the, the reporting entity shall not be administratively, criminally, or civilly liable. Basically, wala siyang liability. Kung ginagawa lang naman niya, yung sinabi ng batas na gawin niya. Okay? Ang tawag po doon, safe harbor provision. Safe harbor provision yan. So far, okay pa ba tayo? I hope so. Okay? Kasi mas masakit na yung tuhod ko, kakaano. Anyway, so, dun muna tayo sa kabila. Alam na natin kung anong kailangan gawin, pero hindi natin alam kung kanino nagre-report. So, dun muna tayo sa kabila, ha? Yung AMLA, it created a body. Okay? Yun yung tinatawag na lang yung AMLAC. Council. The Anti-Money Laundering Council. Okay? Ang tawag ko dyan yung council. Pero ang tawag ng iba, AMLAC. They, they mean the same thing. O sino yan? It is composed of three people. Ayun. O, di ba? Di ba kanina sabi natin, hindi yung BSP ang nagre-report. Bakit? Kasi sa kanya ka nga mag, mag, magre-report eh. Okay? Pero again guys, ha, ang tao sa AMLAC, hindi yung BSP mismo. Yung governor ng BSP, yung commissioner ng IC, at yung chairman ng SEC. Tao po ang laman yan. Okay? So, tatlo sila, they have to act unanimously. So, dapat lahat ng decision in the exercise of their mandate, dapat unanimous sila. Yes lahat or no lahat. Ganon. Okay? Meron ding ginawa dyan, yung secretariat, headed by a, sino nga ba ito? Ah, yeah, the executive director. Okay? Siya yung, itong office na to, the secretariat, okay? It's an office under the council, okay? 
ang purpose niyan is to aid the council in the exercise of its duties. Okay? Siyempre, kasi hindi naman pwedeng silang gagawa ng lahat ng trabaho. Okay? So, para lang alam nyo, may secretariat under the council, tapos sino ang head niyan? The executive director. Okay? Sino nag appoint sa kanya? Sila. Alright? Now, yung council na to, okay, it has 12 powers. 12 po ang power niyan under the law. Ngayon, I will highlight four of them. Kasi, syempre, di ba, yung pagbabasa, kayo ang gagawa nun. Okay. Highlight four. Apat lang. Yeah. I hope hindi naririnig yung tunog ng tuhod ko. Okay. The council is empowered to file criminal cases. Bakit? Ano yung criminal cases, sir? Diba, remember, money laundering is a crime. So, sila, pwede sila mag-file ng criminal cases. Sila po ang complainant. Okay? Saan nila i-file yan? DOJ or sa ombudsman? Depende kung sino or depende kung anong type ng tao ang dinidemanda. So, ordinarily, Department of Justice. Okay? Done through the National Prosecution Service. Tapos, pagkasuhan na talaga, saan ipafile ang kaso? Saan mangyayari ang hearing? Sa Regional Trial Court. Okay? So, DOJ, National Prosecution Service, or NPS, RTC. Kapag naman sa ombudsman, yan ay government official, di ba? Government officials, correct? Government officials. So, pag government officials, ang file mo ng kaso, Ay, sorry, ang filing ng complaint, saan? Sa ombudsman. Tapos, sinong gagawa nun? Yung Office of the Special Prosecutor. Okay? Ang kaso, ang hearing, saan mangyayari? Usually, sa Sandigan Bayan. Okay? So, ombudsman, special prosecutor, Sandigan Bayan. Ganun yan. Next. Okay. It has the power to initiate forfeiture cases. Anong forfeiture? Kailang. Aray ko. Ang civil forfeiture, basically, yung mga proceeds ng illegal activity at saka yung kung kikinonvert na yan into monetary instruments at, or binili mo na ng property, babawiin yun ng gobyerno. Okay, bakit? Kasi kapag yung items, ay sorry, yung funds na galing sa masamang paraan and kung, anong, kung saan napunta yung funds, yun lahat ay illegally obtained. So, kukunin ng gobyerno yan. Okay? Ang tawag doon sa procedure na yon ay forfeiture. Yung isang type ng forfeiture, civil forfeiture ang tawag dyan, hindi mo kailangan mag-file ng criminal case para mag-file niyan. Okay? Independent po sila. Yan ay governed by, ano nga ba ito? 511.4, yeah. SC. Okay? So, kapag nag-file, eh, sorry, kapag forfeiture ang gagawin ng council natin, saan sila lalapit ngayon? Saan sila magpa-file ng, si, kanino sila magpapatulong? Hindi na po sa DOJ, hindi na po sa ombudsman. Pupunta na sila sa Office of the Solicitor General, OSG. Okay? Sino ba yung OSG na yan? Ang OSG po, siya po yung abogado ng Republic of the Philippines. Okay? Yan po ang distinction nila. So, paano mo malalaman? Okay, paano malalaman ang pinagkaiba ng criminal at saka civil case? Yung criminal cases, usually ang title, People of the Philippines versus Brad de la Cruz. ba? Kapag naman civil cases, itong forfeiture, anong title ng case na yan? Republic of the Philippines versus Brad de la Cruz. Yan ang pinagkaiba nila. Para pagbasa mo palang, alam mo na kung, ano, kung anong distinction. Okay? Now, one, two. Yung dalawa pang power, discuss natin sabay. Okay?
Okay. The power of bank inquiry and freeze orders. Okay? Ano yung bank inquiry? Titignan mo yung bank deposit at saka or investments. Titignan mo yung bank deposit or investments. Mo meaning sila. Okay? Yung freeze order naman, basically, you stop the movement of monetary instruments or property which are in any way related to unlawful activities. Again, bank inquiry, you take a look, you, I mean, sorry, the council will take a look into deposits and investments. Pag freeze order, you stop the movement of monetary instruments or property which are in any way related to unlawful activities. Alright? So, okay. basically, yung mga yan, okay, they interfere with private rights. Di ba? They interfere with private rights. So, pag every time there is interference with private rights, the general rule is you get a court order. Okay? So, court order, kukuha ka muna ng court order bago mo ma-perform to. Kukuha ka muna ng court order bago mo ma-perform yan. Okay? So, anong basihan ng court order natin? Di ba, hindi naman pwedeng punta ka lang doon. Kailangan may basis ka. So, ang basis niyan, parehas. Probable cause. Okay? Probable cause ng ano? Pag bank inquiry, dalawa. Money laundering, tsaka ULA. Okay? Kapag ka freeze order, probable cost ng ULA. Okay? Ganyan yan. So again, general rule. For a bank inquiry or a freeze order, you need to get a court order first. Sa kinukuha yung court order na yan? Sa court of appeals. Okay? Now, under exceptional circumstances, di ba ganyan naman sa law? General rule, that's exception. Exception to the exception. Okay? So, under exceptional circumstances, you can perform a bank inquiry or have a freeze order without a court order. Okay? Kailan mangyayari yan? Dito muna tayo kay, kay, ano, kay bank inquiry. Diyan magiging mahalaga kung naalam mo ito. Ano ba yung unlawful activities? Ang masakit po, nakalista yan. Listahan yan. Yan ay 34. Okay? So, I, well, of course, maganda pag memorized mo sila. Pero, that will take a lot of your time. You go over them. Tapos familiarize yourselves. Okay? Kasi, bakit? Medyo mahirap nga yung pattern yan. Kasi, meron dyan. Kunyari, meron dyang bribery. May plunder. Oh, related. Tapos mamaya, merong human trafficking patay na tas mamaya magiging violations of the securities regulation code oh di ba kakaiba eh meron pa mamaya makita mo bakit may anti photo voyeurism dito di ba so i suggest you read through the entire list tas familiarize yourselves meron pa nga doon ano eh national caves and cave management conservation act di ba <laughs> so anyway so familiarize yourselves ha 34 po yan 34. Okay? Pero kung talagang kulang na, kung talagang, well, one, ayaw mo, or hindi mo talaga kaya, tanda mo tong anim na to. Anim. Bakit kailangan mo yung anim? Kasi, yun yung basis ng bank inquiry without court order. Okay? By the way, this is under section 3I. Section 3I. Okay? So, anong tatanda mo anim? Number 1, 2, 12, similar. Tapos, ata, and... Okay, patay na. Ano yung 1, 2, 12 muna? Yung number 1. Ibig sabihin ng 1, ha? Section 3I, number 1. Section 3I, number 2 and 12. Ganon siya, ha? So, ano yung tatlong yan? Unang tatlo. 1, Serious illegal detention. Yun yung number one. Okay? Number two, violations of the Dangerous Drugs Act, RA 9165. Drug-related crimes. Okay? Ano yung number 12? Yung number 12, 
hijacking, destructive arson, at saka murder. So, again, 1 to 12. Hi, I'm sorry. Kidnapping or serious illegal detention, drug-related crimes, tapos hijacking, destructive arson, at saka aray ko, at saka murder. Okay? Yun yung 1 to 12. Ano yung similar? Ano naman yung similar? Yung similar, okay, ang sinasabi dyan is felonies or offenses. Okay? Similar to 1, 2, and 12. Similar, ha? Similar to 1, 2, and 12 which are punished under foreign laws. Again, felonies or offenses similar to 1, 2, and 12 which are punished by foreign law. Yun yung similar. And, yung last two, ano yung ATA? Dati, yung ATA, yan yung Human Security Act. Okay? Dati. Ngayon, ATA na siya. Yun yung Anti-Terrorism Act of 2020. Hindi ba nagkaroon ng halabalu dyan nitong past few weeks? Yan po yun. Okay? Yung isa naman, yung mahaba, TFPSA. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Terrorist Financing Prevention and Suppression Act. So, pag yung anim na yan, kasama yung anim na yan dito, ha? Pag tanda mo yung anim na yan, may masasagot ka na. Okay? Okay. Kailan ka naman pwedeng mag-freeze order na walang court order from the Court of Appeals? Okay? Sa AMLA, wala yun. Hindi mo pwedeng gawin sa AMLA yun. Saan meron? Kailan pwedeng mag-freeze yung council lang. Diyan po. Okay? So, under the ATA and the Terrorist Financing Act, the council can actually issue the freeze orders directly. Okay? Pero may kli lang yan. 20 days, pag gusto nilang pahabain, they still have to go to the Court of Appeals. I hope na intindihan natin to. Okay. Sir, bakit wala dun sa gitna? Mer, sa giant. Okay. Di ba may criminal case tayo? So, if money laundering is a crime, how do you commit it? Paano mo ginagawa yan? Okay. There are two ways. Okay, dalawa yan. One, two. Okay. Unahin natin yung two. Mas maikli kasi yung two. Okay. When a covered person knows Ay, mali. Sulat ko na lang pala muna para ano. Okay. Money laundering as a crime, when a covered person knows that there is a reportable transaction and it fails to do so. Money laundering din po yun. Okay? Kahit wala kang nakuwang pera dyan, money laundering pa rin. That was introduced, I think, by this one. Okay? So, yung una naman, ganito. Okay. Yung unang pamamaraan ng money laundering ay ito. When any person, ito muna yung condition na ito muna. Yung when any person knows that a monetary instrument or property, ano yung rear na to? Represents, okay, involves or res uh, resulted from. Represents, involves or resulted from the proceeds of unlawful activities. And ano yung six? So 
This is the first part. Kailan alam mo na niya. And then, this person does any of the six acts. Ano yung six na yan? Again, listahan siya. Basahin niya ha. You have to be familiar with those things. Ano yung anim na yan? Transact, convert, conceal. Alright? Transact, convert, conceal. Yun yung una tatlo. And then, aray ko. And then, attempt or conspire to do one, two, and three. Okay? Tapos, ano pa? You aid, you abet, you assist, and you counsel. Ano yung one, two, and three? So, lima. Okay? Tapos, ano yung pang-anim? Ano yung pang-anim dyan? You fail to do an act which facilitates one, two, and three. Isa pa, ha? Transact, convert, conceal. Yan yung one, two, and three. Alright? Yung number four, ano? You attempt or conspire to commit what? One, two, and three. Tapos, ano yung next? Assist, abet, aid, and counsel. Alen, one, two, and three. And lastly, you fail to do an act which facilitates one, two, and three. Okay? So again, reminder ah, you, you familiarize yourself kung ano yung mga nakasulat na yun. Okay? So this is, okay? So i-box natin. Now, yan po yung criminal case. Okay? Yan yung criminal case natin. Remember lang sa criminal cases, okay? Kapag, kunyari, guilty, ang ruling, guilty, guilty tayo, automatic po, may forfeiture. Ano ibig sabihin? Pag guilty ka, sa criminal case, hindi na po kailangan na mag-file ng separate na forfeiture. Kasama po sa judgment yon ng korte. Guilty of money laundering and the proceeds shall be forfeited. Okay? So, ganyan. Sir, but may space doon? Kasi, ito ang pinakahuling item sa money laundering na kailangan mong tandaan. Election period. Bakit? Kapag election period, bawal mo gawin to. Bawal mo gawin to. Bawal mo gawin ito. Ano ibig sabihin? Bawal ka mag-file ng money laundering case? Bawal ka mag-file ng civil forfeiture case? Bawal ka humingi ng freeze order or mag-issue ng freeze order? Kapag election period. Against kanino? Siyempre yung mga kandidato. Okay? Kailan na election period? 90 days, be ay, sorry, 90 days before the election and 30 days thereafter. So, yun. I'm Attorney Jay, by the way. And that is AMLA. Nice ba? Nice ba?